So that's pretty much the start of Ice Grip Garage. I've been asked, when are you going to do a Dodge pickup? So I finally did the right thing, went on the line and found one and bought it, sight unseen. And that brought me here 200 plus miles from home on this farm. It's a nice place. And it's going to be worth it because I don't think I could have found a better one. Behind this door here in this pole barn sits a 1979 Dodge D100. She's got a 318 and she's a four speed. But wait, there's more. It's a step side. Of course, I'm just gonna try to get it running and drive it home. Should be fine, probably not. My name's Derek, welcome to Vice Grip Garage. Well, at first glance, this thing is just beautiful. Worth every penny I just spent. No, probably worth mentioning, this rig hasn't run in many, many years. Feller didn't know exactly how many, he just said easily 10 plus. That's fine. Even better, I don't have a lot of parts with me today at all. I don't have tires or nothing. It's got a pinstripe. Well, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know a guy's pretty fond of the stories that go with the vehicles. Sometimes I like them more than the vehicle themselves. This one's got one. She's been passed down. I'm now the fourth owner of this truck. And the story goes, this was originally a state park truck and uh, has some really low miles. And the second owner bought it. He shined on it, put some paint and wheels and dolled her up. Farmer just putted her around and the guy I got it from same thing. He just wheeled it around the yard here and Used it for miscellaneous stuff So the mileage on the old odometer there is supposed to be accurate. I don't know But we'll walk around this thing see what we can figure out about it. Well, I've said it before I'll say on it again Dodge was really good at just making up miscellaneous trim levels this one's a custom but they had I don't know, Macho Man, Adventure Dude, Little Red Express, Power Wagon, one through 10. I don't know. I don't know the difference between them, but this one's in pretty good shape. I think technically it's a third gen, 72 to 80, but the step side, that's what just, it brought me right down to my knees. And it looks fine. There's hardly any dents in this thing. It'll come right out of that. You're seeing some really good wiring back here on the tail lights with some twist nuts. That's that's okay. We got some weight reduction back here. I'm not sure the payload, probably 14 ounces. That's enough. We got a blown tire. Slightly might hold air. I'm gonna see. Yep. So mismatched wheel, and we must have another mismatched wheel, maybe, but that's the spare. Got the holder upper in her. Uh-oh. That's not good. No one ever keeps the keys to their lock and gas cap, so I bet you we're not getting in the fuel tank. You can see the original paint was tan, and that actually supports the state park theory. I believe the state trucks were tan in the late 70s, early 80s, and then they eventually swung over to that green but they got creative and looks like they taped off the original paint and used her as a pinstripe maybe another mismatched wheel 
This one's flat, but only on the bottom. We'll see if we can bring that around. A little bit of weight reduction there, but the rocker don't look too bad. I'm just gonna say the underneath is fine. Don't really feel like crawling under right now. I like that. I'm gonna keep that on there. That's good enough. This fender, not too bad. Already fixed that. I mean, everything's going fine so far. Got the tailgate, thank goodness. The roof is, well, it's, it's there. Let's just say. Must be locked. Well, oh, here we go. I don't know why I walked right past them the first time. State Park 9088. I don't know what that one is. That's something Centennial. It's a bunch of State Park stickers. But I don't know that they'd need the sticker if it was a State Park truck. I think they'd have something on the door or something like that. Maybe we'll find something in the glove box. Let's start by actually popping the hood on this thing. I'm anxious to see what we got going on under here. Guy could start planolating that way because I don't really have a lot of parts or anything with me today. So hopefully it's not too bad. There's a lot of evidence that mice are probably, they're just doing their thing in here. And boy, do they like wires. Biggest thing is, I'm just hoping it's all complete. Oh, that's been a while. That's looking pretty good. Sure enough, 318 with the two barrel in it. And mice report, just quickly glancing, not too bad. We got stage one, maybe stage two, but it's all here. And brake lines look halfway decent up here. Hopefully it was stored up on this concrete the whole time. That really saves on them. When you dig them down in the grass and dirt, Moses, that's hard on them. We got stickers under the hood still. This could be a low mileage unit. Probably not. Let's try to get a damage and status report on the old girl. And then we'll also look for evidence of a low mileage truck and see if we can further prove that or dismiss it. But mostly just damage, missing parts, because that's my luck. Like I said at first glance, everything seems like it's here and where it should be. And I got excited about this. They still look kind of, you know, they're not corroded or rusted out. Well, that one is a little bit, but I always look at this right away, because if the brakes are bad, we got to change the master cylinder. It always comes down to, are these gonna break loose without twisting that line off? Because it always happens. Right away, I'm noticing the water pump's been changed. You can tell by the different color, but also, here's the clamp that came off the assembly line, and here's a newer style clamp. So, water pump's been replaced, and fuel pump is there. But same thing, it's got newer style clamps. So it's had a fuel pump, it's had a water pump. So right there, I would immediately say it's not super low miles. I guess we should look how many it is saying. Got some scotch locks and tape. This is going to be just a ton of fun. Doesn't look too bad though, and they're not too crunchy. I just got to be careful through here. Some more wire nuts. But the mice haven't gotten into it. Diagnosticals, what's that? I don't know, we'll just put that back on. I don't know what this way, what is that? Just pretend we didn't see that or that. Yeah, so I retract. The wiring is pretty much a mess. But as long as we get some fire over here to the lightning maker, that's all we really need, and as long as it charges, this looks intact, then we should be okay. Coolant tank's got a crack in her, dang it. But they're usually a lot worse. They're brittle, and everyone likes to lean on these, and they just explode. Splash guards are still on the inner fender wells. That's also kind of a rarity. Them seem to go right away. Yep. Yeah. 
that refine that wig nut. Okay. We got a lot of Alien stuff hooked into this. EGR, whatnots, and valvulators. <sighs> Throttle's not stuck. Choke blade's operating. There's not a bunch of junk in it. Let's see what the oil tells us. There's quite a bit of gas and oil actually, so without even looking at the odometer, I think she's probably pretty high miles. That or someone has tried to start it and flooded the snot out of the thing. Hard to say. Well, let's take a look in the old cabin here, see what we got going on. I guess we should see if we have a key. That seems slightly important. And then we'll move on to seeing if the engine rotates put a battery in her and just keep working down the list. Why don't I ever ask about a key? Drinker side is locked down or broken. So we'll go through the captain's side here. Hopefully this is unlocked. Oh yeah. Oh, oof. The, it just hits you right now. That's, what is that? Uh, it's boiled dog vomit with just a hint of Twizzlers. Oh, look at that, four speed. I'm gonna have to get that other door open. I mean, it's heavy. Glove boxage, she's just been rammed through. The fuse panel's still in it. This is a huge score, potentially. Yep. Well, that's how we're getting home. 79 Dodge, I'll be dipped. That's a big score. Massive ankle vintage, but looking at the carpet in here, I don't care. I've never seen such majestic carpet in my life. Clutch feels decent. Not even gonna try the brake yet. I know better than that. But what's the mileage say? 128,659? Or is it 28,659? I don't know. You guys could comment down below. You've seen enough of the truck. I guess we could look at the seat. Let me know what you think. I'm thinking it's a hundred at least. Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, even if it was a state truck and they were getting in and out a lot, that just seems like a lot of seat wear. Might even be 229. These saddle blanket seat covers, I think they were in every dang pickup in the 80s. Do these fold forward? Nope, probably not. What do we got here? Dodge, Fiergo, Plymouth, DeSoto. They just couldn't make up their mind, apparently. May of 79. Okay, it's a truck. That's good. Rocker solid. Floor test does fail. What do we got? What's this? This is probably that clamp later up there, maybe. But man, I'm hoping they did. Yeah, it's just a bunch of cobbled wiring. What is this thing? CB23 monitor. Noise blank later. I have no idea what that is at all. Is the parking brake on? Uh oh. That might be an issue. I can't breathe very good in there. Nice design on the door panel. Knob later's missing. But I'll see if I can get this door open. <laughs> How come you won't just... I can't breathe aboard. I don't think that door works. I did see another drinker side ankle vent down there. That's fine. I'm gonna leave this door open just as wide as it can get. Try to get some air in there because I've just never... Windshield's pretty good shape. We've got half of a windshield wiper. That's okay. It's clear and sunny today, so we're not going to need that anyway. All right. Well, I mean, it is what it is. I'm a little nervous about that tire. There's got to be... Oh, we got turbines of some kind. Not sure to what. There's got to be something in here. But the bolt pattern is so goofy on these Dodges. I just... I don't know if we'd have any luck. But maybe that one in the back would hold some air. This one right here. It's flat. I don't know why they'd put it in the back if it was good. Hmm. 
hard to say. Well, anyway, let's move on to the engine here. See if this thing even rotates. That's a directo drive fan, so I should be able just to paw onto that thing and see if she spins over. I'm gonna try this the easy way first, or also known as the lazy way. And then we'll go the hard way if need be, but this thing should turn. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Goes this way. Well, I'm back. There's a the key in it. I knew that. Well, there's nine reasons why a guy picked up this battery, but I'll give you the top three. She's got a go handle. That's always on the top of my list. Who has time to carry a battery like that? It's got flags and America colors on it. Brought me right in. And then it says high performance. I'm guessing nine, 10 horsepower at least. What's this? Don't know. All right, what do we got? Oh, we got an anti-theft system in here. See, you put your ground on the red cable and you're positive on the black. That way someone tries to steal your rig, they just burn it down. Yep. Are the cables gonna reach? That's my next question. That one did. Yep. <clears throat> okay, well, where did it go? Well, here it is. I don't smell anything burning. If I'm being honest about electricity here for a second, I do get more nervous when there's 74 miscellaneous grounds hanging off of a car instead of on the positive side. Positive, you just delete them out. Don't need them. But grounds, they could be chasing something or they tried to replace something or who knows. It's always difficult when you follow up on someone else's handyman work. I don't know. What's this tag mean? Conv cab? Sure. Custom conv cab. Conventional? Probably. Hard to say. Dodge did pioneer the extended cab. What year was that? 1973, maybe? I don't know. 74. Early 70s. <sighs> Let's turn that key and see what happens. I mean, at this juncture, I still don't really want to get in here. The smell is just... It's ripe. I did get the window down. Pretty confident it's not gonna come up in the tune of about 78.7%. Key forward. We gotta fasten the belts buzzer. Let me make sure it's in neutralis. All right, here we go. Nope, didn't like it. We got a battery connection issue. Just your typical dirty battery cable issue. I do my best not to bring new ones. It's just more exciting that way. You wanna make sure you breathe this in as much as possible. Oh, ooh, 82, 81 Ford. Hmm. Nice color, kind of a root beer. Oh, I heard some sparkles. That might've been it. I'm just, you know what? I'm here. Let me clean the negative side too. Wonder what Sammy Kershaw is doing today. Hmm. Well, let's try her again. Hear how slow that was at first? I think she was a little bound up, but it's coming around. I don't want to crank on it anymore before I disconnect that fuel pump. I don't know what she's succulating on. Could be some of that thick varnish, rust, hard to say, but I'm gonna disco that really quick before we tinker around with some more. I gotta start thinking about a fuel supply. I got my boat tank with me, but that's only 10 gallons. So I'd have to really plan my fuel stops out. Might have to just try to see what we can get out of this tank and flush it somehow or something like that. I think that ought to do. I didn't even bring my Lone Wolf 6000 trigger to turn this thing over under the hood. So I'm gonna show you how to just use a Leatherman or a plier. 
Dodge has the same steel me junction as Ford does and some of the early Buicks. And all we need is 12 volt from the battery. And then your starter wire right here. They're usually purple. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be the larger gauge wire traveling down with your 12 volt. And quite literally, just hold my plier on here, jam this end into there, and it's going to turn it over. It's that easy. If the keys rolled forward, we'll get power to ignition as well. So I'm going to test the coil, see if we got some lightning coming out of that. And then we'll get down here on the spark relators and make sure we got spark down there. Again, I'm going to try to use as much as I can here today because I just don't got a lot of parts. And anybody could just start slapping on new parts and pieces, but let's see if we can get this thing going just as is. Well, you guys have seen this, what, a hundred times now? But if you're new to the channel, just a fast way to check your coil is just, I got this old test light that doesn't work. Probably just need to replace the light bulb actually, but yeah. Ground this out, pop the wire off from the coil to the lightning whirler. And if I hold this at the very end of the coil while cranking it over, she should just be snapping lightning in there. Really fast way to check the coil. Or you get the digital meter out and you can ohm it, your primary and secondary windings, but we would only do that if it failed this test. So I'll get this set up and then I'll try to get the camera in there so we can see what's going on. <sighs> Where's a decent ground? Over here, maybe? Yeah! Yeah! Gotta try to do this with the five arms I got here. I'm gonna squeeze this over the battery cable, poke that wire into the end of this, and then reach up in there and see if I can get that to spark up there. Okay. Got that. Sure. Okay. And you just gotta lean up here like this. Oh yeah, she's shooting lightning. I'll do this again so maybe you guys can see it. Guy should probably check for spark down here by the spark lighters. I'm gonna use this spark tester. Pretty easy way to do it. You can find them pretty much at any hardware store in the self-help aisle or Evil Bay or that jungle website. Just put it in line and the light here will just blink at you if you've got fire down there. Yep. And, yep. Here we go now. Uh-oh. Well, is my brand new battery already dead? Well, the premium power high performance battery is not high performance. She's already deader than a doorknob. I got my battery tester here. It ain't good. I'm gonna bring up the work rig and plug her in with the jump later cables. Chew on a sandwich for dinner and then 15, 20 minutes later, should have enough charge again to spin this thing over. Well, if I wasn't between nowhere and BFE, I'd just take this battery right back. And then you know what I'd do? I'd get another one, the same exact one. These clamps are so chewed up over here. She's been jumped probably 313 times. It's fine. Yeah. I don't care who you are. There's just something about spicy buffalo chicken. What are the chances that starter's bad? You know, them Mopar starters, they just sound like a sick dolphin when they're good. And they're pretty known for being bad. Well, here's where our guy's at. The battery was low, but now I got her all the way up to 16.2 volts and I still got nothing. Uh-oh. I'm gonna start by replacing the ground cable here. Might even put a black one in. I don't know. If that doesn't work, we're moving on to step 12, which is just beat on the starter like a Nintendo controller. and Maybe it'll come back around. 
but most likely not. We just, it's starting, we're already off the rail, I think, at this point. But that's okay. The sun's a shining, and I had a good sandwich. All is well. Jeez, this engine is dirtier than an Ariana Grande video. So we're gonna watch that light there. Hopefully she blinks at us a little bit. It does. Boy, we're just barely moving down the list, but progress is progress. The good news is it's way past dinner time. Anyway, I want to take it easy on that starter. I just, she's, I think it's barely hanging in there. Well, I mean, it sounds what they usually sound like, but it's probably just barely hanging in there. I always like to guess what the sparkulators are going to look like since I just stand around talking to myself all day anyway. And based on I got gas and oil, I'm going to say they're really fouled and we're probably going to have evidence of burnt oil as well. I'm thinking the rings might just be, you know, they're down. Yep, basically nailed it. We've got some burning oil, fouled. I think I'm just gonna knock on the neighbor's door over here, see what that's gonna tell us too. It's easy enough. What are you gonna tell me? Same exact story. <sighs> Hello, I burn oil and I'm also running rich. So basically, I'm just gonna put these back in and pretend that we didn't look. Yeah, that seems fine. I could put those other plugs in, but to be honest, they're just gonna get fouled immediately anyway. So I'm gonna save the $32.49, I think. Yeah, that's a good plan. Well, how long are these threads for Pete's sake? I ain't got the time. I think my blood pressure is getting up there. Well, I am just right back into having battery problems again. This one was dead in the back of my truck, but I'm gonna charge on it a little bit. And maybe I'll actually hold the charge for more than 32 seconds and get this, whatever it is, high performance thing just out of here. I also might have some sort of electrical issue going on, clearly, but I gotta have a battery longer than two or three cranks. Otherwise, we just, it's going to be a bear getting this thing started. Yep. Yes. Yeah. While you guys have been sitting around, I got a lot done here. Got the lightning cube charged up. I also put a new positive battery cable on her. Found this one when I was digging for that one. Figured mazel. When I took the other end off, it was pretty rotten as well. And then I vice gripped a standard bit onto here. So now when I go to start it, I just boop. That's a lot easier. And then this wire from earlier, I got to looking on her. And she has a fusible link right here. And it's a striped wire. And it goes into the main harness, into the fuse block. So it's got to be an accessory, a guy figured. Cleaned her up, got that punched in. And I'll be dipped if the blinkers and the taillights weren't just a flash and the hazards were on. So that works, I guess. Glad we got that figured out right now. So I think we're back to, let's throw some Firemaker down this thing and see if it says something to us. Smells like granola bars and dirt. So I'm definitely going to use this. Whoa, ah, perfect. It says run. I'll keep running the starter even. Severe valve train noise, but that'll come out of it when it builds pressure, hopefully. But it fired right off, that's great news. Also, I probably should have checked that it was still out of gear, but you just, you gotta live on the edge. <laughs> We got a lot of weird noise and there's a lot of wrong, but it's good. I like it. 
I like it a lot. Let's get that gas out of the crankcase. And then we can go ahead and start bottle feeding on this thing, see if we can get it to idle out. Might even plug in some bad gas out of a different container and uh, let her warm up a little bit. I suppose we should check the coolant on the thing and still not going to worry about brakes. Next step for me is does the clutch work? That's nice in town. I don't think the shop's been swept since Vietnam. See if I can find a broom or something. Guy gets his shirt dirty. How's he gonna go to town, you know? Got an oar. We can tie a seat cover onto that. What's this? Chevy? Oh, solid mount. Uh, probably a demolition derby car, I'm guessing. What else we got? A yard man. Surely I should throw that in the back of the truck. No broom. Oh, here we go. Gary, I'm going to borrow your creeper. It looks really good. Keep my belly off the ground anyway. Since the guy's got to get the front end up in the air anyway to change on the oil, we might as well figure out what this tire is going to tell us. I got some rejuvenation spray here, fix the flat. It basically destroys your wheel once you put it in. But this isn't the wheel I want to use, so I'm not too worried about it. Don't have to have the tire guy chase me around. Plug this in and see if it goes up. That would be handy. Still don't understand how a little can like this can air up a truck tire. There's science and astrology and there's Pegasauruses involved. I'm not sure. I think this thing might actually hold air. Probably didn't even need to goop, but that's all right. Oh, hey spider. Why are you so mad? There are no way these tires are gonna make it over 200 miles. Normally I bring a set with me or I have enough time, you know, a day or two to get on Craigslist and find a set, but not today. I did get a hold of a tire company in town though. They got a set of 15s, but of course they're worth twice as much as a truck, but I don't got any other options. They're willing to sneak me in, but I gotta hurry. They close at five. That one's got a heck of a wobble to it. I hope that wheel bearing isn't on its way to heaven. All right, what am I doing here? Oil. She's a roller. Goop lies. Ooh. Yeah. This side's a little better. Well, we'll have to pop the dust caps off later and see what we got. Guy could just close his eyes for a minute, I suppose. Got a few pieces of good news. When I twisted off the old filt tray, oil just came just spewing out, which means it's already building oil pressure. That's great. They had an AC Delco in there, which is not too bad. Anything but a Fram. I threw a Wix in it. I always run Wix whenever possible. Both underneath and on topper. Let's get this thing filled up and see if we can get her actually idling. Just ate a ladybug in an accident. Also, I don't have any oil. I usually always carry diesel oil with me, but I was in such a hurry this morning, I guess I don't have any. So I'm going to scoot into town, which is actually quite a jaunt. On the way there, I'm going to start dialing up, see if I can find some wheel bearings. I'm pretty sure we're going to be into that anyway. Ah, <sighs> here we go. Maybe grab a wobble pop or two. Back from town, guy did find some other wheel bearings. I know one shot, don't know about the other one quite yet. Got some oil too, but man, did it chew up most today. I'm really going to have to hustle with the rest of this if I'm going to make it to the tire store by five. Picked up this D-Lo Chevron heavy duty diesel oil. I've been using this quite a bit. And mainly because, well, it's the cheapest on the shelf. Well, I just dumped all of that, not even close to into the engine. There we go. 
Got some carbon choke cleaner here. I'm just gonna a little bit, see if we can get her to idle or run a little bit longer. Just want to make sure there's no other major mechanical issues before we go forward. Not really building very good oil pressure. Lifters are just a clanking in there. Well, what we got is an engine that runs pretty good, actually. Wasn't paying attention. Is it smoking? Huh? Well, anyway, the valve train doesn't sound good, but we're just, we're going to give it the benefit of the doubt. It's been sleeping for a long time, but it runs and it sounds pretty decent. Nothing sounds horrible on the front end as far as water pump, charging whirler, power steering pump, any of that stuff. So let's figure out a fuel system. Normally I'd get my boat tank out, and kind of rig up something there, but I just ain't got the time now. I think I'm gonna jump right in trying to make the onboard tank work. When I was underneath of it, it looked pretty decent. I'll show you guys here in a second, but we're gonna have to try to get the cap off because there's a key and I ain't got it. I mean, that looks like a plastic tank to me. So pretty good chance if we can just get the old fuel out of here and i got a pump that we can run i could splash some fresh fuel in here well <laughs> fresh fuel in here flush it out and then just plug it right back in with a little filter it should be good but i got to get this out of here first see if i can find a drill or something get that off i'm gonna see if i can tickle this out of here without dropping 342 pounds of shavings into the tank Tickle, tickle. Okay. <coughs> Smells exactly like paint. Wow, where are you going? I'm gonna drop 1.3 liters of fuel in here and then we'll try to suck her out from the front there. Whoa, whoa now, what is, what's going on? Why don't you want to go in the truck? What is this thing? I don't know. Fuel door proper opener. Hope there's no leak in the tank. I just, I'm leaking too much here. There's going to be a fire. Guy always wants to use a clean funnel. Sure. Okay. There we go. This is already looking and feeling better. That's a fairly confident pour. Let's start there and see if we can get her, you know, up front. We got a system rigged in here now. And basically, this is the line from the tank that normally goes to the pump. Ran that to a filter. Up to my clicky clack, get her out of their 9,000 pump. Subscriber actually mailed that to me and I use it more often than deodorant. That comes around here to my good gas jug that I use to start rigs. And then she's over here and powered up by the battery. So I'll run that for a minute. Sometimes it does pull from the tank. Other times I gotta get down here and put the whistle maker on her and prime it up that way. And once it gets fluid in here, she'll start sucking. But basically, I want to pull maybe a gallon back through because all the varnish and stuff is going to be sitting in the line of the tank. And once we get that out, make sure the sock isn't plugged up in the tank. 
Then we could probably put it on a mechanical pump and make sure that thing's working. Now let's see what we got. I'm gonna go blow in the filler neck while this pump is running. See if we can get her going that way. Nope. Well, I always just used to do it this way. And then I started dinking around with all this other junk and technology. Just gonna go back to doing it the real way. Oh, start here. I'm out of juice. Yeah, let me get another can. Got a full can. Keep your eye on that filter there. That feels nasty, but she's nasty enough to run on. There's no chunks in there yet, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. We'll eventually swap that filter out, but for now, we're just gonna run it. Gonna throw some coolant in this thing, and then we'll see if we could bring this carburetor back around, get this thing idling. And for some reason, this gas is almost a green tinge. I'm gonna top this off with some peak full concentrate. And then we just gotta look for neon green leaks in the cooling system here. Hopefully this thermostat pops open. Let's see if we got an accelerator pump. Eh, kinda sounds like it. I got my carburetor adjuster tool handy, just in case we gotta tap in that needle seat. Sometimes they get stuck one way or the other. We'll fire on it again here, and my goal is to just get this thing just idling on its own, hopefully. Idle circuit is just gummed up on her.
not horribly bad. Still ticking pretty good. It's getting better. It's quieting down on this side. Oil pressure light went off. Not that that really is any accurate, but. Hey, it's running. It's idling. We're making a lot of progress. I'm gonna let it just sit here and run, chew through some of the soap gas, and then I wanna see the thermostat open, see how the head gaskets are gonna take it, all of the lines, see if we got any leaks in the radiator. Just building pressure and running through, that's fine. This will probably come up a little bit. It's a really nasty gas. Fuel pump feels strong. I can feel it pulsing. I'm gonna grab my meter and see if the charging whirler is charging. The dash gauge says it's charging, but I'm going to check it with the digital meter quick. Thirteen, that's perfect. It's not overcharging. So far, pretty good. Still waiting for the thermostat to come open. Some of the smoke is the 58 gallons of oil I spilt on the manifold earlier, so I'm not going to be too worried about that. Hoping these old belts hang in there. I don't got any belts on me either. I got some sort of bug in my ear. Oh, there it is. First time running in at least a decade. Sounds pretty good, actually. Valve train, she's coming back around. A couple sticky lifters, pretty typical. Carburetor's all out of whack. It's running pretty rough and it's idling a little too high. I'm gonna hook this onto my manifold vacuum, do some adjusting here. See if I can get her to just calm down a little bit, run a little bit smoother. Starts right back up. Quite a bit better. It's gonna take a while. Guy's gonna have to run on it for a little bit. Yeah, we could still do an Italian tune up on it as well, but probably have to come back around to that carburetor in the future and dink around with it just a little bit more, but so far so good. I'm gonna crawl around underneath of it, see if we got any fuel leaking or oil or anything else. And then it's finally time. Do we have a clutch in this thing? And least importantly, is there any brakes? Of course, my vote is no, because I don't think I have yet to seriously have a revival on this channel that has brakes, that I can remember anyway. <sighs> no brake scratch. I'm actually pretty happy so far. No knocks, anything bad sounding out of the engine or the transmission. I didn't even check, I was in such a hurry. The exhaust isn't plugged, obviously. This leak is from the overflow tank, and that oil leak is from me spilling 54 gallons of new stuff. Everything else, I mean, it's looking pretty good. Make sure I don't have any fuel leaking back here. That would be pretty obvious. Yeah, I don't see anything back here. So I'm gonna jump in this thing and see if we could throw it in gear. I really hope this is aired out in here by now. All right. Went in. Yes. Reverse. Whoops, I think that's the wall. First, we got a clutch. It's shifting. 
and brakes and brakes you are not going to believe this but the brake pedal it just goes all the way to the floor and bounces right back up great <sighs> when's that tire store close again oh yeah any minute well, let's not get too spooked now. Let's see what we got here. Hello? Is anybody home? It's empty. Well, that could actually be really bad. Why would it leak out? It takes quite a few years from my experience for brake fluid to dry up on its own. I mean, that's got to mean this thing's been set in 15 years, 20 years. I don't know. I'm just gonna fill it up and start jamming on that pedal like Michael Jackson. And you just, you hope that something happens. No one's here to bleed them with me, so we're just gonna have to take what we can get. Could maybe find a stick or something, hold that brake pedal down. But usually when rigs have sat this long, you strip the bleeders out of them. And then you try to crack the line instead of the bleeder, bleed it through the line, and then you twist the line off. And then you're flopping around on the ground for about four hours trying to figure out brake lines, going, I should have just took what I had, you know, in the beginning. It's one of those life lessons. Beggars cannot be choosers. Got the drinker side front up. I'm gonna take this tire off. Really quick, get this wheel bearing in. Probably not even look at the other side because I have like 40 minutes to get to town to get tires on this thing. So that gives us about two minutes of drive time, 28 minutes to put bearings in and the balance to drive and just hope that everything works. Well, well the inside brake pad is basically non-existent. Might not be as bad as I thought. The inside tie rod is shot and that might have been causing the wobble that I thought was contributed to the outside wheel bearing, but I'm gonna clean some of this up, spin it off and just look at it anyway, cause I'm this far in it. This thing pretty much looks exactly like a baby's diaper. So it's been in here for quite a while. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit with some brake cleaner. If it's halfway decent, I'm gonna repack it anyway. So I'm just gonna tss, so I can see what's going on. Yep. It's a Timken bearing and it's got one small groove in it, but it looks pretty decent. There's not excessive play. Get a light and look at the race. I might be able just to pack this thing and call it good. I got her cleaned up real good. The race looked just, it's fine. Cleaned up the cap here. I'm gonna just scoop some new stuff in and just bash it in there. She'll sell feet and I'll just wipe up whatever extra is. New of brand. Well, as luck would go on and have her, previous owner Gary and some young feller I think it was his grandson. I don't know. They swung by just checking in on the old girl and they did help me bleed the brakes. That was nice. I was searching around for a stick to jam down on the pedal. Started up at the master cylinder, eventually got some juice there and then we just bled the fronts. That's all you need. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? I think we're just, let's just set it on the ground and Get it out of this pole shed. I think that's a good idea. And maybe just keep going. I don't know yet. I got a mess like you just, I can't, I just can't believe it. I've been working on the railroad. Nope, still never have. Wish I had two more of this style wheel, to be honest. Maybe I could find some poverty caps for these steel wheels. That wouldn't be so bad. Where'd my hammer go? There it is. Yep. 
This is my favorite part. This is my favorite part. Driving these vehicles out from where they've been sitting for a decade or two, basically from the grave. Let's get this thing out of here. I believe I may have stopped this with the brake pedal. I'm gonna put the air cleaner back on. I've got a brand new air filtration unit system thing to put in there. Maybe tune on it just a hair. And then let's just go see what this thing's got. I'm gonna bring that idle back up a little bit now. Maybe adjust on the air fuel just a touch. Yeah, there's a bunch of nasty stuff floating in that. Quick way to do a leak check, where you drug your rig out from, just look her over. And I'm not seeing anything new. We were really pumping on the brakes, so if the back brake lines were out, there'd be a bunch of fluid just sprayed over here. And I don't see any of that, so that's good news. Well, let's go for a spin, I guess. Steering works great. Uh -oh. gas station just like two miles down the road. Let's see if we can get over there. Put some fresh gas in us. Maybe wash the windshield. Five. 
severe rear floppage on this side. That one's pointing at the ditch. I guess I could have checked that first, but that makes too much sense. There's definitely too much stuff floating in here. It's just, it's in my teeth. Literally. Uh oh. Hood's coming up on me. I'm gonna bring the speed down. It's about four inches high. But I know she's stiff, so I'm just still gonna try to make her. Yeah. I think we're gonna make it. Yeah, here we are. Tassaro! I think that's how you call it anyway. Oh, it quit. It's fine. We're here anyway. Shut it down. The reality is this. I ain't gonna make it to town in time to get new tires put on. But that's okay, because that was 500 some dollars that I just, I didn't want to spend. I called a guy named Joe. He's got a place called Joe's Auto. It's right there, behind me. He's got something off of a manure spreader and a baler. So we're gonna go over there and see if we can cobble together two, maybe three tires. Throw them on this thing. Hey, it started. <laughs> oh, God. Curb. I think we figured out the rear brakes. This one, you know, drum looks fairly normal. I come over to this side. And, um, well, some King Wong, I just, yeah, it's got the Wi-Fi in here, you know, that's, that's what's going on, I think. Just got the wheels on, but I can't keep this thing running. I'm gonna empty that filter into this, empty this into there, see if I can get it to fire, see what we got going on. And then see that clump of trees? About another mile past that is the farm where all of my tools and everything else is. Great. Joe's a nice guy. He's uh, He's gotta be home by six, you know? So he's gonna swing around, pick me up, drop me off. And then I guess I'll come back here with the work truck, see what we can do with this thing, and then I gotta figure out. Anyway, it's just, everything's gonna be fine. It's a beautiful day out, actually, so I'm just gonna get the legs out, relax a little bit. I am not flexible and this hurts. Well, I got a click clack here, some zip ties. I found some yellow wire and a mess of brown. Two hose clamps that are broken and a little chunk of tube. Basically gonna get in there right where that filter full of junk is, stick this in there, and then make some sort of electrodigital connection over here to the battery. And if I got a picture of you? No, guys, man, not at all. You got your selfie mode engaged? Uh, I can sure try it. It is a long while later and things have just escalated. I'll bring you up to the speeds, put in the clicky clack, had a filter to the pre-filter to the clicky, wired into the blower motor switch. I hate those scotch locks, but dang, they're handy. Low speed's 10 and a half volts, high speed was 12. Guy figured I could modulate fuel flow that way because I don't have a regulator. Was gonna ground her out to the charging whirler here. Could not suck fuel from the tank, but I could blow back through it. So that means the sock is plugged, unfortunately, with all that crud we were seeing in the filter. So maybe the mechanical pump isn't bad. Sure enough, I went ahead and primed up the mechanical pump and it started sucking just a little bit. But now I figured the carb was full of junk, so I did pull the needle out, clean that up, and now I'm taking some of this and just blowing back into the bowl. 
getting some junk out of it. And then I went ahead and ran this boat tank so we could get some fresh fuel, you know, right out through here where it's going to cut the line right into the floor here. This is going to be an issue because we're going to go through that really quick. But don't forget, we got, I don't know, 12 gallons of bad gas in there that I could probably pull out with a filter and then just keep filling it into that. But I'm running out of daylight. Sun's going down pretty darn soon. So I'm going to put this carburetor back together, see if I can get some fresh fuel in it. And we got to dance. It's time. Well, I'm just gripping on to reality. Should have just done it the way I always do it. Guy gets in a hurry, cuts corners. Should never pull fuel from tanks that old and it just bit me. Here's the reality. It's just, this ain't gonna work without a carb rebuild. I've called every single part store within a hundred miles. No one's got a cart or two barrel. And I've been known to carry a couple kits. I've got about every darn flavor you can imagine. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to perform carburetor surgery with no gaskets on hand, which means it's either gonna work, but if I tear a gasket, I could try to make something work, but that's, that's pretty well just gonna shut me down. I gotta hurry, I'm running out of light really quick. Maybe a guy's got a light back there in the shop, I don't know. But that's where, that's what we're gonna do. That's what's, this is what I'm, this is where we're at. I am getting hungry too. Well, I've never been more delicate, but she's got a rip in her. Just so dried out. Everything looks good physically, except, you know, she's just plumb full of junk. Check balls moving. I can clean all this up here. And I got a little bit of silicone. I think I'll smear this together throw it out here in the road see if we can get that to dry up and put it back together see what happens I didn't take it off the truck because no one knows what's going on here I've tried every tool on the truck they're rounded off and they're alien or something I just I can't believe it so here we go feels good to lean over this weird plastic thing that should have never been invented but everything's fine gonna clean this out with some rags get some in there we're still gonna build on it and see what happens why not got nothing else to do making progress getting her back in I broke the magnet out of the back of my harbor freight light was able to get the balls out of there clink clink got them replaced got it fairly clean kind of hard getting the bottom of the bowl but I scraped in there pretty good ran two whole cans through the thing so I don't know if it's going to be better or not. Hopefully that gasket holds up. Almost got this together and we'll fire on it again. It's officially zero dark 30. The Skeeters are just in force. It's getting bad. Spray my arms down with carb cleaner. That seems to help a little bit. It's like the fuel make it happener. I mean, it's one piece again. I think it'll work. Probably not. Sorry it's so dark out here. Parked under the light, I figured that would help a little bit, but it's came around quite a bit. Still trying to decide if I'm gonna try to drive this thing or not. I'm gonna scoot down this highway and back a couple times and uh, I'll make my decision what we're gonna do. It's super late and there's just, there's no help at this time of night, you know? It's not like there's no film crew. It's just me. Should have brought the sleeping bag. Dang it. Boy, you guys probably can't see nothing. Huh. Well, anyway, went down and back twice. She's got a little bit of headlight. Super dim. Hardly see nothing. Tail lights, no brake lights. 
And I think I'm just gonna pass on this one. It's way too dark. I can't see nothing as it is with these dim lights. And I got no brakes in the thing. I'm way too far away from home and way too many towns to go through. So I was hoping to do this in the daylight, give me a little bit more time to tinker and fix along the way, but it just wasn't gonna happen. I think I did win in a way, I got her running. So in the future, it'll give us some more stuff to do when we get her to the shop. So there you go. I don't know how long I was sitting, decade two, 79 Dodge, she's a runner. We'll get it to the shop tomorrow and we'll start tearing into this thing. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate it very much. If you haven't already, consider subscribing, that'd be neat. See you next time.